Good morning and welcome to St. George's uh, morning prayer, right two. All page numbers will refer to the Book of Common Prayer. Please join in singing together hymn number 109, the first Noel.
beginning on page 75. Behold, the dwelling of God is with mankind. He will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, God of all mercy we, confess we confess that we have, that we have sinned against you, opposing, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Continuing on page 80. Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim and praise. On page 82, continuing with the Venite. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with songs. For the Lord is a great God and a great King of all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for to the it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. We'll say responsibly Psalm 84, verses 1 through 8. How dear to me is your dwelling, O Lord of hosts! My soul has a desire and longing for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh rejoice in the living God. The sparrow has found her a house, and the swallow, and the swallow a nest, where she, where she may lay her young, by the side, by the side of her altars. altars. O Lord, the Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Happy are they who dwell in your house. They will always be praising you. Happy are the people whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set in the pilgrim's way. Those who go through the desolate valley will find it a place of springs, for the early rains have covered it with pools of water. They will climb from height to height, and the God of gods will reveal himself inside. Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Hearken, O God of Jacob. Behold our defender, O God, and look, and look upon your face and your anointing. On page 84, glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it, as it was, was in the beginning, beginning is, is now, now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. A reading, a reading from the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise and say, save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, those with child and, and those in labor together. A great company, they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, he who scattered Israel with will gather him and will keep him as a shepherd a flock. 
For the Lord has ransomed Jacob and has redeemed him from hands too strong for, for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young of the flock and the herd. Their life shall become like a watered garden, and they shall never languish again. Then shall the young women rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their fill of fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Let us read together the song of Simeon. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the letter to the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you. As I remember you in my prayers, I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. After the wise men had left, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and flee to Egypt, and remain there until I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. Then Jesus got up, took the child and his mother by night, and went to Egypt, and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Out of Egypt I have called my son. When Herod died, an angel of the Lord suddenly appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel. For those who were seeking the child's death life are dead. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. But when he had heard that Archelaus was ruling over Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. And after being warned in a dream, he went away to the district of Galilee. There he made his home in a town called Nazareth, so that what had been spoken through the prophets might be fulfilled. He will be called a Nazarene. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. And just like that, it is 2022. We've entered a new year. It's always an exciting time filled with anticipation and expectation. I have many hopes for the coming year, as I'm sure you do as well. Personally, I like to create lists. The mainstream media creates a lot of lists, such as who died in the past year, what were the top trends, and the best movies. My lists are not about the past. I create lists of things I want to accomplish. I sometimes have daily, weekly, and monthly lists. Whenever I have too much to do, I start to make a list in order to plan how to accomplish it all and to make sure I don't forget anything. And I take great delight every time I can cross something off my list, having accomplished it. Many people make New Year's resolutions. I make a list of goals for the coming year. The definition of a resolution is a formal expression of opinion or intention made. The definition of a goal is the result or achievement toward which effort is directed. To me, a goal is tangible, while a resolution is more theoretical. The Bible is full of lists. The Ten Commandments are a list. We have lists of the tribes of Israel. The Old Testament is full of early, almost unpronounceable names, lists of genealogy. There is a reason for these lists. They are grounding us in God's might, guiding us to follow him and take action. Goals to which we should aspire, adherence to the Ten Commandments, and to be like the tribes of Israel and the many descendants. In our gospel reading, we listen to the story of Jesus, Mary and Joseph fleeing the wrath of Herod. It is a compelling story, and one seemingly fraught with impending risk and danger. In our modern times, Hollywood would turn it into a blockbuster. But the Bible treats it in a matter-of-fact manner. God's plan was for Jesus to save us. And to do so, he needed to grow up first. Therefore, Herod and his soldiers could not be successful in finding the baby Jesus. This isn't just the story of a baby. It is the story of the church. Jesus is the church. Our New Testament reading today is from the book of Ephesians. Historically, this is recognized as Paul's letter to the Ephesians, which is an exposition of the divine plan for the world and the consummation of this in Christ. If we read a few verses further in this same reading, to verses 22 and 23, Paul explained to the Ephesians, and God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, 
which is his body. The fullness of him who fills everything in every way. Why is this so important for us to understand today? Countless studies tell us of the changing participation of people in mainline churches. The number of people who identify as having no religious affiliation continues to grow worldwide. As a group, they are often identified as nuns, N-O-N-E-S. I'm perplexed when I interact with or read about people who state they are spiritual, but do not participate with the church. If Jesus is the church, how can one truly be spiritual if one does not support and actively participate with Jesus and the church? Each year, my list of goals for the new year is long. I usually have at least 30 unique items I put on my list of things I will actively try to accomplish for the year. For this past year, I had 40 individual goals on my list. Mundane things, perhaps, to anyone who might read my list. But things I wanted to personally do, see, as well as work on in my house and yard. I regularly reviewed my goals throughout the year, and I achieved most of them. Those I did not achieve have been added to my list for this year, another long list of goals. As a member of St. George's and a member of the vestry, it is important for me to also have goals related to the church. To be fully engaged with Christ, the church, I believe we should all have our list of goals. What can we each be doing to support the church? We just went through a very powerful way of showing support to the church by pledging for 2022. But we should not stop there. What will we each contribute to the church? There are so many wonderful St. George members who give a lot of time, talent, and money to the church. It is humbling to view the contributions of the people who make this place work. I won't list names. You know who you are. Could you list your personal goals in support of St. George's and Christ the Church? Your goals for the church need not be large and time-consuming. They can be thoughtful and contemplative. Here are a few suggestions. Pray for the church, fellow parishioners, Mary, our priest, and other leaders. Reach out to a fellow parishioner. Ask them how they are doing and listen to them. Many people are frustrated during the pandemic, and having someone to listen to can be a very powerful thing. Join a committee. The Finance, Building, and Grounds and Communications Committees are always open to new participants. Volunteer to be an usher, greeting people at the front door. Assist the altar guild. Join the vestry. Clean out your closets and donate your unwanted clothes to the food pantry. Donate books to St. George's Little Library. Include St. George's in your will. Bequests are the main source of funds for growing the endowment. No matter the amount, it all adds up. Making goals can be fun and inspiring. Focus on the result of your actions. The rewards to you will be greater than you might anticipate. My yearly list of goals is all about action. They are not theoretical, and they are attainable. I recently read some words by Thomas Jefferson. He first poses a question. Do you want to know who you are? Don't ask. Act. Action will delineate and define you. We know the church is the body of Christ. We too are the body of Christ when we follow in his footsteps. Today as we celebrate Jesus' flight from Herod, let us remember it is our charge to uphold and strengthen the church.
And now let us say the Apostles' Creed, found on page 96. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last. Amen. So welcome to everyone in person, although there are very few of you, and the number doesn't matter, we're pleased to have you, and certainly always welcome to the people online. Very few announcements today, the uh, collection boxes in the narthex, or you can donate online uh, by going to the website. Uh, on Wednesday is the food pantry from 10 until 11. On Wednesday evening is a vestry meeting at 7 p.m. On Saturday and Sunday is also the uh, soup kitchen at Good Shepherd. I have no other announcements. Anyone else in person have any announcements? Good. So we will continue on page 97 with the prayers. The Lord be with you. And with, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed would be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Continue on page 98 with suffrages B. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them and allow them to Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall, and we never, shall never hope in vain. O oh God, who wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restored the dignity of human nature, grant that we may share the divine life of him who humbled himself to share our humanity, your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Continue with the prayers of the people. As we prepare the way of the Lord, let us offer prayers to God, who will lead us with joy in the light of God's glory. For the peace of the world and for our unity in Christ. Come, come O Lord, and save, save us. For Michael, our presiding bishop, for Andrew, Alan and Mary, our bishops, for Mary, our priest, for Paul, our worship leader, and all who minister in Christ, and for all the holy people of God. Come, come Lord, Lord, and save us. For the church throughout the world, and the faithful in every place, come, come, Lord, and come Lord, and save us. For the leaders of the nations, and all in authority, come, come Lord, Lord, and save us. For justice, peace, and freedom among peoples of the earth. Come, Come, O Lord, and save us. For travelers, for the sick and the suffering, especially Linda, Alan, Sue Ellen, Teresa, and Carol, and those we now name aloud or in our hearts. And for the hungry and the oppressed, and for those in prison. Come, O Lord, Lord, and save us. us. For the blessings of this life, we give you thanks. For the celebrations of those we hold close, 
especially those we, those we now name aloud or in our hearts. Come, O Lord, and save us. For the dying and the dead, we remember all of those who have died and those at rest in St. George's Cemetery and Columbaria, and those we now name aloud or in our hearts. Come, O Lord, and save Come, us. Come, O Lord, and save us. For our deliverance from all afflictions, strife, and need. Come, Come O Lord, Lord, and save, save us. Joining our voices with the Blessed Virgin Mary, John the Baptist, St. George, and all the saints, let us offer ourselves and one another to the living God through Christ. To you, to you O Lord, Lord, our God. On page 394, Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and on earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Being on page 102, the prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty, Almighty God, God you, you have given us grace at this time, time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this whole world of knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. <clears throat> All together saying St. George's Prayer of Mission. Grant we beseech Grant we thee, heavenly creator, creator, that as we go forth, that we live our mission statement to find and serve Christ in all people, to love our neighbors as ourselves, and to respect the dignity of every human being, so that we may know Christ and make Christ known to the world. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be, to Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen.